All right, traders, welcome to this FXDD live webinar here on how to measure bounce and continuation trading ideas and setups. My name is Chris from Elite Currency, and I welcome you here live. Thank you for joining. Looking forward to talk about this topic. I personally use confirmations. Basically, this is about confirmation of price, you know, acting as we would expect according to our plan in, in the zone or area that we expect support or resistance, of course, um, without necessarily assuming that. I mean, we could assume that and place a pending order, but who knows? Price could just go right through that zone, and, uh, and of course, that, that's the risk. There's pros and cons of both ways. We're going to discuss that, of course, in this live webinar. Uh, and uh, before we do that, though, as always, need to explain this risk disclaimer. It explains the fact that trading force change and the global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And uh, this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. Thank you for your attention on that. So here you see, of course, the links uh, towards with the live webinars. So if you're looking at the recording later on on the YouTube channel of FXDD, here's how you can join live. If now you're looking live, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course, of X FXDD to catch all of the videos and recordings of these webinars. Okay, so I'm going to close this and we're going to focus now on uh, the charts, of course. So let me pull over the MT4. There we go. All right. Yes, there we are. Uh, Wait, I'm confused with the live webinar. I actually, <laughs> I'm going to go back. My apologies, because I actually had some slides prepared. And uh, <laughs> we'll do that first of all. Okay, there we go. I wanted to talk. So sorry for that interruption here. Uh, let's go. All right, there we start. First, I wanted to share this with you. And these are the ways I measure the bounce of continuations. Two simple slides with a couple of methods or, or you know tactics that I use for measuring bounces and continuations, okay? Then I'm gonna dive into the live chart, so I got a little bit ahead of myself. I'm so used to you know looking at the live charts by the way. But uh, then we'll take a look at live charts. And for each of these aspects, I'm going to show you in the past and right now how that, you know, what kind of, how would that look like, right? What am I waiting for? How do I measure it? How do I use that, this tactic? Uh, you know, if you're looking for break, pullbacks, and continuations or other short abbreviation for that is BPC, then I think that these uh, couple of methods are really great for doing that. So, First of all, moving averages, not one, but a couple to get an idea about a zone of price. I really don't think that price is stopping necessarily at one moving average, whereas with the zone, it kind of gives an area, a wide area and a rough estimate where price could stop. Uh, I don't think it's going to you know, stop at the precise pipette of the 21 EMA close. But if I use a 28 high and low, that range could give me a better idea of where price could stop. And it doesn't even have to be in that zone. It could be a little bit above it or below it, but it does, it does give me an area. So I use multiple moving averages to give me that area. And uh, that's where I look for a bounce. If, the move, if price does bounce at the moving averages, then that's an indication of continuation. That's one way of trading it. If it breaks through that or if it sticks to the moving average it stays in that zone that's not a bounce and that could indicate weakness as well so i'll explain the details just later on on the real charts this is just to give a first impression and introduction okay then i use fractals because if fractals occur in the zone where i'm expecting support or resistance that means that there have been a couple of candles already that have bounced right because a fractal only appears if a uh, candle uh, doesn't have a lower low 
or a higher high. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a, if if there if there is continuous higher highs and lower lows, there's no fractal. So if there's a fractal, that means that price is responding to some level. That could also be a good tool. Fibs, of course, obviously uh, good to you know levels where price could bounce. Very logical. I think everyone is aware of fibs, fib retracements, fib targets, fib sequence levels, right? All of those very strong levels, very often uh, highly respected by the market. Uh, and uh, the second slide here, I like to use the Yasmin Oscillator as well or the MACD because of the fact that if price is trending uh, and then retraces the pullback, you will see that pullback with the MACD or Yasmin Oscillator bars. And the bounce often occurs when the, the bars reset in or continue in the previous direction. So if, if the bars are rising, and there's a retracement down, the first bar that goes up or the first to three, depends how aggressive uh, you know, the approach is used, indicate that, okay, the retracement is probably finished. Also very useful uh, method for that. Then I use patterns, candlestick patterns specifically, and time patterns. Candlestick patterns, I think, is very clear for everyone. Obviously, bullish engulfing twins, uh, for instance, in, in the support zone or resistance zone, indicate a potential continuation, right? And time patterns, basically, it's like a fractal, but a more lengthy version where there are five to seven candles not continuing into the counter trend direction. All right, if that wasn't clear, don't worry, because we are going to take a look at charts, and I'll simplify everything and go step by step and, uh, and show it on, on the chart, okay? But uh, I do want to add that, of course, with pullback and continuation setups, uh, the, the direction or let's say the, the structure of the chart that has better odds for a break pullback continuation approach is if the market is trending or if the market is in a momentum now this concept bbc can be traded in both directions against the trend with the trend and even in ranges don't get me wrong but i think there's a slight edge uh with trading with momentum at the very minimum okay maybe with the trend too but momentum certainly so that's very important i think with momentum helps a lot whether it's with the trend or against the trend, well, you know, that is something that I think with the trend, I would trade it with more risk. I think there are better odds, but I wouldn't necessarily skip counter trend setups either if there's a clear break pullback continuation. It, but uh, it depends on, uh, you know, it depends a little bit on certain factors and isolated kind of conditions. With isolated, I mean like specific conditions of the chart. All right. That's that. So now we can finally move on to the chart. Uh, okay, great. I got a follow-up question from Adri on actually on FIB levels and FIB sequence levels. Uh, so we'll talk about that as well. Let's take a look. Uh, let me close this. Now open up the charts as I as I already did. All right, let's start with those fibs right away. Adrian already mentioned it, that's great. So, now, with fibs, personally, I should kick off with explaining that uh, from a discretionary point of view, fibs is great for bounces, right? In my personal strategy, I use FIBs primarily for understanding space and structure. So FIB sequence levels, for instance, uh, indicate, for those that are not sure what FIB sequence levels are, uh, basically I measure the FIB sequence, the number of pips from the 144 EMA. So as price moves away from the 144 EMA, there are bigger and bigger FIB sequence zones. So that indicates typically that there will be potentially bigger movements as price 
gets further and further away from the 144MA. That's the FIB sequence concept very quickly so that I don't lose anyone who, who isn't aware of that and hasn't seen previous webinars perhaps. Um, so of course, at one point that will end, at what moment, at what moment the price will go back to the 144MA. You can see there was a great acceleration away from the 144MA, but eventually it does retrace. So it doesn't last forever at one point higher FIB sequence levels are often bouncing spots actually for, for such a retracement, right? So with me, myself, I use FIBs specifically for targets. I use FIBs for understanding this space and whether it's overextended. In this particular webinar, uh, I'm talking about bounces and continuations. I personally don't use it for uh, my strategies themselves this particular FIB concept for bounce and continuations, but you could, and I'll show you how. So I hope I'm clear. So you could, for instance, put a FIB from here to here. That's one swing from fractal to fractal. And uh, why would you do that? Because the momentum is up, right? One of the main messages I wanted to explain was that trading with the momentum is so important. So momentum is certainly up. Let me Let me go back so we can see that a little bit better. So momentum is up here. Now trend is still questionable because 21 is, you know, it's still actually below the 144, then it crosses above the 144. So eventually it could be seen as an early with the trend setup once it crosses or starts to cross, but it's certainly still in a, in a questionable kind of spot about the trend. That's why I said the trend is okay, but really momentum is the most important in my view. So momentum is up. So putting the FIB for, on that swing, on that particular bullish swing, and then we could expect a retracement and potential bounce at the FIBs. So what happens? A, B, C. And this is a random spot that I just chose. I didn't pre-plan this, by the way. Uh, a, B, C. A goes to the 23.6 FIB. For those that like to add waves, by the way, I'm just automatically doing that. But you don't have to, of course. And then the wave C goes to the 38. It, it went to uh, 130.60 here and bounced then to the upside. So... The pullback and continuation, uh, basically, when using the FIB, would be in combination with candlestick patterns, right? Because you would have to have some kind of confirmation through price that price is responding to these FIBs. So this particular candle would be such a confirmation after the bounce or the candle itself that goes to the 38. But this candle is in the confirmation. The next one is. So in this case, it would be, have to be this candle that confirms the bounce of the 38. Okay, so that's how it could be done. From a discretionary point of view, I do use that, by the way. But I have to think deeply here. I don't think uh, any of my uh, rules-based strategies don't have such a, you know element in them, as far as I remember. But I do, I did definitely trade uh, when I can disc discretionarily, then this is certainly something that uh, makes sense and I've used in the past very often. Okay, now I'm trying to focus more on rules-based uh, strategies uh, at this moment, trying to add a few more of them. So, but in the past, when trading discretionary, definitely a concept that I did use. Uh No, FIBs indeed, FIBs could have a bias, but everything has. And in fact, I mean, you know, from a certain point of view, uh, there is no no lag in the, well, I guess, yeah, not not lag in the traditional indicator point of view. I, I, I agree with you on that, like from that point of view. Um, I mean, of course, the main thing is where do you place the FIBs and do you place it in the right direction? And that that's, of course, important. So in this case, this FIB is quite maybe logical, but there are moments where maybe it's less logical, for instance, right? So uh, let's say, uh, I mean, putting a FIB from here to here could have made a lot of sense, right? The, ultimately, that would not have worked because this bounce here at the 78.6 FIB didn't go anywhere. So just because there is a confirmation of a bounce, does and, a, and not only a confirmation of a bounce, but a continuation actually as well, in some degree, it didn't break above the 20 May. It depends how you define continuation. But yeah, you got a bounce, but got flatly rejected, would have been a loss. So, of course, we can always find examples. And here we found a, a good one uh, where uh, the bounce didn't happen that well. And if actually a pending order to 78, 
still could have given about 50 pips, but not the confirmation. So the overall structure is important. That's why I look at also how far has this move extended? Because if that move up has extended too far, that means that the retracement not, might not be a retracement, this, this push, but it could be a reversal. That's why I look, try to keep an eye on the overall uh, chart and to make sure that I kind of avoid these spots by estimating whether the trend is overextended, basically, uh, using fibs, divergence patterns, overall support of resistance levels, um, and other filters at times. So let's see if we could find another example. Uh, we certainly can, of course, always at the end of the trends. Obviously, that's a very easy way to, to find a few examples like that. Uh, before the trend ends, though, yes, it would typically work pretty well. 61.8 fib, big wick at the 61, and indeed a follow through down to the minus 61.8 target. Um, and, and just using these fractals, in fact, for swings, not bad. I'm, I'm trying to find an example where it didn't work too well. Uh, here, of course, we got some reaction at the 78 didn't continue higher but if you if you look at price you know at this point uh maybe a little bit too short of a swing let's compare this swing to the previous swing so here we have a fractal above the 20 MA, and here we have a fractal on the opposite side so that's the difference and here we had a fractal above so Fractals, for instance, help identify here that this swing might be a bit sturdier because it, it's a full swing from one part of the EMA to the other part of the EMA, here too. Uh, here too, by the way, but yeah, that's why we have to be careful of end of trends, right? And here not. Here, this is a swing that is on one side of, both fractals are on one side of the 20 may. So it's something that might help. Um, it's not as easy as just like finding one one fib and placing it to the other. Oh, here we didn't get a bounce though. Here price just crashed, so we didn't get a bounce. So that would have been avoided. You got to pick and choose kind of the spots that make sense from a discretionary point of view, from an analytical point of view, so that we're not kind of caught in uh, in fibbing uh, maybe a wrong spot. But this, sorry, this swing high, 23.6 fib bounce, worked out well, for instance. So there are plenty of examples that work, even counter trend examples here, 38 down to the minus 272 target after a bounce. But of course, it's highly dependent on it, on finding the, uh, and using hopefully the correct swing. Uh, let me find a, again examples that didn't work out. Hang on. Because all of these seem okay to me. Uh, we've got to look far and hard to find that. It's pretty good. But yes, I mean, if you were to fib something very small like this, obviously, yeah, that wouldn't work. Or, or something like this. That's kind of a small swing uh, within a bigger range. So if you miss that, that this is one swing, this is a swing, this is a swing uh and and trade something smaller then that could also lead into some some difficulties of course when using uh the fibs and bounces all right that's the fib part so now let's talk about the moving average part so moving averages here for instance we have a break a pullback and bounce and continuation so with moving averages it's great now True, price went a little bit below the 20 MA, but that's why I said it's, it's a zone, not a, a rock and solid area that has to exactly bounce at a one level or even a zone. What I look at typically is the candles around the 20 MA. So if if the price sticks roughly around the 20 MA, I would consider that to still be a pullback. So this pullback is fine, even though if price pushed a little bit below it, I think it's it's from my point of view still fine. But if it were to do something like this, then this is not a pullback anymore. That's too aggressive against the uh, you know it 
this is not a pullback. Obviously, prices, specifically with the scandal, really pushing far away from the 20 May, strong closes below the 20 May. So in that case, this could still be a pullback, right? But not anymore after that. Then it's really prices breaking below the 20 May. We wouldn't consider that to be part of that pullback process. But certainly you can see the difference with this, where price is still around the 20 May, right? Here too, break, pullback, and price sticks to the 20 May. That's fine as a pullback. So that's how I use moving averages. The continuation part would be with, well, how I do it is with candles versus the 21 EMA. So I'm looking for candle closes that can uh, pull away from the 20 EMA. This one would be valid. This one would be valid, for instance. So those um, examples of continuation pullback and continuation patterns, using candlesticks at the moving averages to measure, the, you know, has the pullback, is the pullback okay? Is it? Too deep or is it shallow you know is it shallow enough let's say is it is it a moderate pullback and also the continuation does price re-break again in the same direction above those moving averages for continuation all right so here's another example pullback fine and continuation this one or this one okay right it didn't go all too far but you have time from a trade management point of view to 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 deal with that because if price goes lo too long sideways then of course there's the option of trade management, which definitely would be wise to do. Now, not all break and pullback continuations work on a uh, with the moving averages as well, just like with fibs, because if we get into a spot where the trend is ending, obviously, of course, uh, we're going to run into the same problem. So this was a break, pullback. One might consider this to be a continuation candle, but it doesn't go anywhere. Again, that would be the example of the opposite that failed. So why would it fail? Why would this setup necessarily fail? Well, maybe because ultimately um, price is maybe going to too too much sideways. It's maybe kind of in, a, in some kind of corrective pattern. So maybe waiting for the trend line to break instead would be a better approach and more conservative approach with with this spot specifically here. Maybe not with these candles because at that point, right in here in the middle uh it could still be a, a minor pullback but if price then continuation continues and there's another pullback well then could be a kind of a warning signal that the pattern might be taking too long might be creating some different type of corrective pattern or if there's any reason for us to think that here at this particular level uh price might be struggling we see from a round psychological level that it's very close to 130 for instance so we might be already hesitant about the fact that the trend can continue at that point. So all of these could be warning signals that, hey, this this particular break pullback continuation might, you know, might not really work out as well as other setups. Let's let's try to avoid this. Let's skip this particular setup. Let's filter this one out because it's really not a good spot. So all of these concepts, I think, are great. But I think personally, it helps a lot to understand the overall structure and then make sure that it fits within that uh, view, right? In this case, there could be good reasons to to skip this one. If not, excuse me, then of course, losses are always part of trading. Uh, let's be fully clear about that. Of course, that when it, uh, trading is a probability, of course, and yeah, we're always looking for that long-term edge, not whether one particular trade ends up for a win or a loss. That's that's not the point. It's about a series of trades, and that's always the most important. All right. Hi, Ali. Let's see. Great stuff. We can always check, indeed, higher time frames, absolutely, uh, to get more information about the breakout and uh, get a better idea about the trades. Absolutely. I think big uh, benefit with multiple time frame analysis absolutely in fact maybe we can talk about a great trick uh or trick concept that uh uses multiple time frame analysis that's a great uh addition ali i like using a strong breakout candlestick pattern so for instance this is a great candle break breakout candle this could be okay-ish as well but rather than taking the breakout candle I like to look for on lower time frames for the break pullback continuation 
signals on lower time frames. So this is a four hour chart. So we'll put lines here. And for instance, on a 30 minute chart or 50 minute chart, there we go. Great method is to look for a flag or some contracting triangle on a lower time frame. The cool thing about that is if it is a false break on the four hour chart, on the lower time frame, price often does this up, boom, down, really, really rapid. Often it's like a mountain or a, a very steep valley, of course, for the other direction. And it's often like, a rocket up and boom, a very intensive fall down very quickly. If you see that, normally not great. I mean, it could eventually still continue. There is always the possibility that price might consolidate at a lower spot. Typically it goes up like that, then still makes one more lower low, and then it could consolidate for still an uptrend continuation. In that case, it could be a false, false break, funny enough, but uh, it could also be a total reversal as well. But in any case, if it does such a strong downside, then it's often a close in reverse and best to avoid trading with the breakout and being careful. Not impossible to trade with the breakout, but certainly way later. Whereas if we don't see a close reverse like that on the lower time frame, but instead we see a pattern like this, right? So we got a great breakout candle on the higher time frame, and then we see a pattern like this, okay, like that, that indicates that there's no, that the risk of a false breakout is low. There are no sellers here. Buyers are still hesitant maybe because of the breakout, wanting to see how that plays out. But as price goes sideways, it's more and more clear that this is becoming a flag pattern that often is a continuation pattern after momentum up. So we shouldn't be surprised that indeed the breakout is, is good and continues higher, uh, as you can see. So that's a great way of, uh, of trading a breakout with the break pullback continuation concept on the lower time frame. Yes, correct, definitely. Uh, if you either with this lower time frame or without this time frame, and you can do both. It is possible to put a fib on the candle itself like that if there's a good breakout candle because it has to be good because otherwise we cannot really trust the low or the high in this case the candle low as a bouncing spot or a spot where we can put the stop loss but if the candle is strong enough in size close enough to the high that it's a dominant close and uh yeah, those two factors. I think there's one more factor, but doesn't matter. Uh, or if there's some wick at the bottom to indicate buying pressure, for instance, with bullish candles, obviously, then we can use that pullback, put the fib on the on the candle and use the pullback continuation just based on this time frame or in combination with the 30 minute chart or 15 minute chart as well. And in this case, we had a 38.2 fib bounce, and here we had a 78 bounce, and both going to reasonable FIB targets. So yeah, definitely a great combination as well. So this is this is funny because now we're, I think it's funny at least because it is, we're mixing kind of concepts here uh, very nicely. We're using moving averages, candles, FIBs, candles at FIBs. Look at that. We're looking at break above the moving averages, pull back into the moving averages and the FIB on the candle itself. And then maybe even candlesticks at the, at the, Candlestick closes and bounces at the fibs of the breakout candle, right? So even this could be the entry. So this is r really a lot of options, maybe sometimes too many options, but uh, it is fun because it is interesting as well because you got such a wide list of uh, a wide menu of options uh, to tackle these things. That becomes a little bit more easier when you have more experience, obviously, uh, when starting out it could be best to focus on one or two ways to practice that more intensively before maybe using too many of these concepts, of course. Then we got the MACD, for instance, or the awesome oscillator. So this would be, if, if we see this as a break pullback continuation, then this is where the MACD would indicate that 
because look, we have momentum. We have thick blue bars above the middle line. Then we have thin blue bars above the middle line going back to the middle line. And then we suddenly have a thick bar going in the original direction. So that could be a good kind of continuation uh, signal when using the MACD, for instance, or awesome oscillator for that matter. Uh, so that is the awesome oscillator example. Maybe one more just in case. Uh, let's see. Even counter trend, it could sometimes work, although this is against the moving averages. We see thick red candles, thin red candles in the continued retracement, and again, a thick one indicating the continuation uh, lower, right? A, B, C. But in this case, it's a counter trend move, but it did work out. So if one is able to choose the spots wisely where a counter trend trade might take place, it, it can work out. Of course, it's always a little bit more risky. Uh, because, for instance, here we had the same pattern, but of course here the continuation didn't go anywhere. Now, the part of the difference is that from a discretionary point of view, here we just had an ABC finished. Here we had price breaking below the 28 for the second time. Here we have price potentially retesting the bottom in 143 May for the second time without breaking below it necessarily. So those are two discretionary things that I see, but if you strictly look at the MACD only, then that's the setup, and that's the setup. One works, one other doesn't work. Uh, but if if you analyze it, there are reasons. I mean, there could be reasons to to see that beforehand. Um, in any case, of course, counter trend is always a little bit more tricky. With the trend, it's a little bit easier. So we have momentum, pullback, and here the MACD confirmation of a continuation, for instance. So that's how that that works. And. Um, what else was on the menu? Let's see. Time patterns. Yes. Yes. Time patterns and fractals. I didn't talk about those two yet. So, okay, let's do that then to make sure we covered all of the the topics. And then I'll take a look at uh, the last questions there. Okay. Or comments. So fractals. Uh, basically, so we got a break. Now, whether you use, I don't know, I'm using moving averages here, but that's not a must necessarily, of course. One could also use a trend line like that to indicate the break. But in any case, or other as other tools, right? I'm just using moving averages myself. But in any case, fractals are uh, helpful when indicating the bounce because you see fractals here at the 20-day zone indicating that good chance that price is respecting this zone and bouncing, Okay. Let's see if we can find more examples. I got a lot of fibs here, so maybe I should renew the template one second. All righty. Um, now, not everything works out. Here we got a fractal above. And price made a small bounce, but it didn't go too far. So once again, context important, of course. Where does that pullback take place? Important, right? But uh, as a... General kind of indication, not bad, because often when you see those fractals, it indicates uh, at support and indicates that price is probably going to uh, finish its, its, you know, its retracement time. Let's go back a little bit, just a random spot, I don't know, here or so. Uh, so fractals below the 20 may indicating a bounce. Fractals above 20 may, but price going back very quickly in that. Fractal at 21 EMA. Now, fractals are confirmed a little bit later, so it wouldn't be much space to the upside here, but still some. And uh, here we see fractals more aggressively above the 20 EMA. So that is a spot where price might make more retracement or reversal. And it does push up one more time. And then finally, we get a fractal below the 20 EMA, and that's where actually after that, price starts to reverse back down. So fractals going in the opposite direction and not respecting the 20 May could often lead towards a first step of a retracement or reversal, but not always. Here we got, with this fractal, we did get a bigger push, but not with this one. We still got one more lower low. After that, we got still one more correction, uh, you know, quite a major correction as well. Uh, and uh, let's see. Um, yeah, if the fractal is further away from the 20 May, of course, it's more dangerous. If the fractal is closer to the 20 May, like this, it's better because it indicates that 
there are less buyers, less momentum to the upside. And as price breaks through these fractals, we see a continuation. So very useful to use fractals in combination with support and resistance or moving averages in general. Um, and a good breakout or bounce spots. So for instance, here, fractals at 21 May, but price decides not to break below support, but above resistance, and we got a counter trend move instead. So key you know, decision zones for that. And then last but not least, time patterns. So time patterns, five to six candles, not breaking a high or low. So for instance, here we have a high, one candle, two candle, three candle, four candle, five candle, six candle. Six candle is bearish, not breaking above this high. That indicates that probably price is bouncing at the 20 way. We didn't, we had a break here. So this could be the final bounce, uh, for instance, or even five to six candles here could have been that, but it depends on where the stop loss is. If the stop loss is above this high, then it probably would be a loss. Uh, let me give you an example. Maybe let's go back a little bit. I'm looking for break pullback continuation uh, patterns. So here we have a break. We have a pullback continuation, five to six candles, five to seven candles not breaking this low indicates the end of the pullback. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles here. Not breaking this low. So probably break pullback continuation taking place. Now, five to seven candles can sometimes be late because price has already moved a lot. That can happen. But so it's a little bit more conservative. But if it does appear and it does happen, then typically that would indicate that the pullback is over and the continuation, the continuation swing is on the way. Maybe one more example. I'm not sure if, if that's crystal clear. So let's take a look at this break, pullback, and continuation. So when is the continuation? When is the pullback over? Once again, if five to seven candles not breaking this low, so one, two, three, four, five, six candles bullish, then already quite likely that at this candle, indicating that this bear swing is over. And therefore, with the break above the 20 a as an extra present there, uh, the sixth candle as well, not breaking through this low, it's likely that the pullback is over and the continuation is starting. All right. Uh, Ali is adding, I also recommend audience how to read MACD lines and histograms. It helps a lot to see the trend. And uh, Nenet has a detailed video on that. Great, great tip, Nenet. Definitely the master of MACD, and I've, that's something that I uh, have learned from him. I myself was using the awesome oscillator in the past uh, more often, but I really, really uh, like the MACD uh, as well. I now use both, in fact. And uh, yeah, I definitely agree. A lot of uh, information um, you know, available through the, the MACD bars, the histograms here with the cross, the thickness, the change, um retracement and continuation the lines themselves as well so yeah definitely i even have a one strategy that's based on those in fact on the macd lines uh, in combination with my uh, other strategy things but that's one one sub one strategy within that you know the bigger uh one part of all the strategies that was that one one sub strategy or one strategy within a range of more strategies. All right, folks. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you for being here. Great uh, to see to see everyone here. Thank you for uh, the comments, uh, guys, Ali and uh, Ajiri, um, guys and girls. Thanks for being here. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next uh, videos and webinars with FXDD, of course. Uh, above all, wish you great trading uh, and uh, great days ahead. And see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.